بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله والسلام عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله حملا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah We continue going over the tremendous book by the Fudil to Shaykh Al Allama, Al Shaykh Al Imam bin Baz, Rahimuhullahu Ta'ala. The book which is entitled Durus Al Muhammad Li'amit Al Ummah. Important lessons for the general masses of the Ummah, or important lessons for every Muslim. We are still on this section dealing with the Arkanul Iman, dealing with the pillars of faith. And we are on the first pillar, the first pillar or the first article of faith, which is Al Iman Billah Azza wa Jal, is the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. The Fudilat al Shaykh. Sheikh Abdul Sheikh Abdul Razak bin Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Abad Al Badr, Hidhumullah Ta'ala. He mentioned that Al Imanu Billah, belief in Allah, Hua Al Iman Bewahdaniyatilla Jalla Wa'ala Firububiyatihi. That belief in Allah that it consists of singling out Allah Azza wa Jal alone as relates to his rububiyyah, his lordship, as relates to uluhiyya, as relates to his worship, that all worship belong to him and to him alone and as relates to his names and his attributes and that the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal that it will be upon these three foundations it will be upon these three foundations وَلَا يَكُنُ الْعَبْدُ مُؤْمِنًا إِلَّا بِالْإِيمَانِ بِهَا وَتَحْقِيقِهَا and that an individual, a slave he will not be a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by believing in them and by actualizing them. 
Naam, except by believing in Allah's rububiyyah. Except by believing in the asma wa sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except by believing in the uluhiyyah. That all of the worship belong to Allah and to Allah Jalla wa ala alone. Naam. This here is of extreme importance because the rest of the pillars, they come after this pillar. Meaning that if this pillar is not there, then the rest of the pillars will be non-existent. They also won't be there. Naam. So it is incumbent that we believe correctly in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone who believes, everyone who would like to be written from the believers, they have to make sure that they affirm their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they know what consists of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if it was such a, of a situation that an individual did not know that they are required to believe in the rububiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they didn't know that they are required to believe in the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they didn't know that they have to believe in the uluhiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that all of the ibadah belong to him and to him alone. How can they possibly benefit? How could they possibly benefit? We covered in the last class what it means to believe in the rububiyyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we go on to Ruknu thani the second pillar that is linked to the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh he brings as the second pillar Al Imanu bi Wahdaniyatillah Jalla wa ala fi asma'ihi wa sifatih is the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone as relates to his names and his attributes. As relates to his names and, and his attributes. Naam. <coughs> Walahu وَأَنَّ لَهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى وَصِفَاتُ الْعُلَى That there belongs unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautiful names and lofty attributes. There belongs unto Allah beautiful names and lofty attributes. Naam. قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكِنِيمِ وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدِعُوهُ بِهَا And they belong unto Allah the most beautiful name. So call upon Him by way of them. Naam. Now this is a question I want everyone to ask themselves. How many of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could we name off the top of our head? Let's put a number to that. Could we name 10 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the top of our head? Now, I want everyone to answer to themselves. And with the ta'ala, I want them to make an exercise for themselves after class, throughout the week, with the ta'ala, to try to name 10 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then once you get to 10, try to name 20. Once you get to 20, try to name 30. 30 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from your head. Ma'am. Because, again, we have to refocus our lives, inshallah ta'ala, to focus in on those things that really want to benefit us. Ma'am. And bila shak wa bila right, undoubtedly, no doubt, what will benefit us tremendously is knowing the names of Allah Azza wa Jal and the, and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal knowing His names and knowing what they mean Naam. knowing His names and knowing what they mean 
This is this is very important. Because Allah Ta'ala He says, So call upon him by way of him. Naam, so call upon him by way of him. So the ulama they mentioned that from the adab of dua is that when you call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a particular thing, then you utilize the name that is appropriate. This is from the adab of dua. Naam. So if you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, naam, then you will call upon him by his name, Al Ghafur. Ya Ghafur, Ighfirli. Naam. If you're asking for salama or the like, then you'll call upon his name, which one? As Salah. Naam. So on and so forth. Naam. So these things are very important. Very important. An example of this that can be found in the Sunnah is the dua that we say during Laylatul Qadr, when we're seeking out Laylatul Qadr in Ramadan. Because in that, we're asking for pardoning. Naam, we're asking for pardoning. And this is why it's important to know what are the names and the attributes of Allah SWT so we can utilize the proper one we'll be asking for the the yani, what we're asking for. So in that, who remembers that dua? Nah, but in Arabic. Nah, and we're asking for all of us. All of us. Nah, right. So. But we find in that in the afun to help the afu fa'fu anni, and they were asking for all of us multiple, like multiple, yeah, right? Right. So this is an example of how we are to utilize the proper, yeah, name and or attribute inside of the du'a when we're asking for du'a. This is from the adab. This is from the adab. Naam. And if we're going to implement this ayah that can be found in Surah Al-A'raf in this verse 180, then we have to learn the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? وَقَالَ Allah Jalla wa ala And Allah Jalla wa ala He says, قُلْ اَدْعُوا اللَّهَ أَوَدْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ أَيَّمْ مَا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Allah Ta'ala, He says, and call upon Allah or call upon Ar-Rahman. No matter which, meaning which of the names you utilize, because they belong unto Him, the most beautiful of names. They belong unto Him, the most beautiful of names. Naam. وَقَالَ جَلَّ وَعَلَى And Allah Jalla وَعَلَى He says in His noble book, <laughs> for homework, to help you with your homework, right? If you memorize these ayat, it'll help you. If you memorize these ayat, it'll help you. These are ayat from Surah, from the end of Surah Al Hashar. The last three verses from Surah Al Hashar. If you memorize, this will help you a lot with your homework. Right? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, Yanni, a bunch of the answer, right? <laughs> but, inshallah, khair. It's good. It's good. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the book, "Who Allah who Ladi la ilaha illahu alim al ghaybi wa al shahada, who al Rahman al Rahim, who Allah who Ladi la ilaha illahu al Malik al Qudus al Salam al Mu'min al Muhaymin al Aziz al Jabbar al Mutakabbir, Subhan Allah amma yushrikun." هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم. نعم. That 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 uh, يعني put you ahead with the homework, right? نعم. Allah عز وجل says what translated means. And He is Allah besides whom none has the right to be worshipped in truth except for Him. The all-knower of the unseen. He is the most gracious, the most merciful. He is Allah besides whom none has the right to be worshipped in truth except for Him. The King, the Holy, the one who was free from all defects, 
the giver of security, the watcher over all creatures, the watcher over his creatures, the almighty, the compeller, the sublime, the supreme. Glory is unto Allah. Glory is unto Allah above all of that in which they associate with him as a partner. He is Allah the creator, the inventor of all things. The one who bestows the forms and gives the forms and shapes to all things. And unto Allah they belong the most beautiful of names. And all that which is in the heavens and which is in the earth, then they glorify him. And he is the almighty, the all wise. And he is the almighty, the all wise. Now, the Shaykh goes on, he says, For the Quran and Kareem, Mushtamilun ala ta'rif bil ma'bud. Azzawajal. He says, So the Quran, it comprises with giving us or informing us and telling us about the one who was worshipped in truth, Allah Azza wa Jal. Teaching us about Allah Azza wa Jal. Naam. Bi'adhumatim. About the, the greatness of Allah. Wa bi asma'ihi wa sifatihi wa af'alim. Jalla fi ula. And also in teaching us his names, his attributes, his actions. Glory be unto Allah, and how lofty is He. فَمِنْ أَرْكَانِ iman. So thus from the pillars of Iman, is to believe in the asma, al imanu bi asma'ihi wa sifati. Is the belief in His names, and the belief in His attributes. Naam. The belief in His names, and the belief in His attributes. بأن نثبتها كما جاءت That we affirm them as they have come. Then we affirm them as they have come. ونمرها كما وردت And as they have been narrated unto us. بلا تكييف ولا تمثيل ولا تحريف ولا تعطيل that we believe in the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they have come without takyif without a takyif wa ma ma'na a takyif what does takyif mean because we have to believe in the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a takyif without a takyif now if we don't know what a takyif is then how can we avoid it? Now, a takyif huwa ithbat kayfiyya as sifa. It is to affirm the description of a characteristic. It's to affirm the description of a characteristic. Now, uh, takyif a how something is done yani the cave right when we ask about each other what do we say kayf al hal kayf haluk ma'am kayf meaning what how how are you doing oh kayfak ma'am kayfak ma'am how are you so on and so forth but we're asking a how so you see that same in takyif because it's talking about the kafiyah, how something has happened. Uh, the ulama they bring as an example, Shaykh Rahmani mentions. He says, "Kaan yaqul istawa Allah ala al-arshihi kafiyah tuhu hakada." Yani kada wa kada. That Allah, He rose above His throne, or His rising above His throne was like this and like that. Now, His rising above His throne was like this and like that like a person describes it yeah now so this is so this is as to describe the manner in which Allah ta'ala 
has risen above his throne. So, so, try, so in, in, in trying to describe that manner, then this is what? This is Takif. Trying to describe the manner. Trying to describe the manner that Allah descends in the last third of the night. This is Takif. Now, because with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being above his throne, Al Istiwa Ma'noom. Now, as when the man came and he asked Imam Malik, How is Allah above his throne? And Imam Malik had a piece of wood, uh, like a stick, yani, inside of his hand. And he got angry when a man asked that. And he needed to yani, calm himself down. But he said he got so angry that he started taking a stick and he started digging inside of the... Because remember, the, the masjid was dirt, the floor was dirt. He started digging and digging a hole in, with, the, with, with the stick. He got so mad, the man asked his question. And he did that for a while. Then he took the stick and he threw it. He was angry. And he said that the istiwa ma'noom, the fact that Allah is above his throne is well known because Allah has informed us. Ar-Rahman al-Arush istawa, that the most merciful is above his throne. Allah Ta'ala has explained that to us. So we know that Allah is above his throne. He said, well, kayf majhul. But the how is unknown. Allah did not, dis did not inform us of how. Naam, Allah did not inform us of how. And likewise, with all of the 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 uh, the, the the attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He did not inform us of a how. Allah Taala says He has a hand. Naam, He has a hand. How is the hand? Allahu A'lam. He did not tell us how His hand is. Allah Taala tells, yani He descends in the last third of the night. How? Allahu A'lam. He did not tell us how He descends. The only thing that we know and that we affirm is what Laysa kemitli He shape. And this is the principle as relates to the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laysa kamithlihi shayn that there is nothing that is uh, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is nothing that is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naam that is the principle as relates to these things naam so we affirm them how are they Allahu a'lam laysa kamithlihi shayn there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So a takyif is to describe the how, how something is done. So we believe in the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without describing how. Does that make sense? Now, Also, wa la tamthil. And we don't make a likeness for them. We don't make a likeness for them. The ulama they mention a tamthil idbat mumathil lishay is to affirm the likeness of something. Can yaqul yadullah mithl yad al insan? Like a person, if he say that Allah's hand is like the human hand. Wa iyadu billah. Now that Allah's hand is like the human hand. That makes sense? No. Mm -hmm. oh, no, Tamthir. Now, Takyif is to describe how, how Allah has done a certain thing. In English or Arabic? <laughs> no. It's Alif, Lam, for the in the huh? Alif Lam Ta Kaf Ya Ya Fa At Takif And the next is At Tamthil Again Alif Lam Ta Mim Fa Ya Lam Takif is to describe how Allah has yani Allah's attribute. So for example to say that Allah rolls like this and like that. Now that Allah rose above his throne like this and like that. Or Allah descends in the last third of the night like this and like that. Right? Tamthil is to liken 
Allah's attributes to something. Like to liken Allah's attributes to those of the human beings. To say that Allah's hand is like the hand of the human being. Then this is tamthil. And this is what Allah Ta'ala negates inside of the ayah. Laysa ka mithlihi shayt. There is nothing that is like him. There is nothing that is like him. Right? That makes sense? But also, bila tahrif. Also, without a tahrif. A tahrif is spelled alif lam ta ha ra ya fa. Naam. What tahrif fi lugha ma'na a tahrif. It means to change something. Naam. Tahrif. In the language, it means to change, to change something. That makes sense? Like. Istilahan inside of the deen, what is meant by tahrif, it means taghir al-lawf, lawf al-nas, it means to change the meaning of a text. Now, to change the meaning of the text. Oh, excuse me. To change the the wording of a text, love and nos, al ma'na. So in the language, oh, excuse me. So in the uh, in the deen, shara'an, the legislative meaning, it means one or two things. Either you change the actual wording of a text, or you change the meaning of a text. Now, the ahl al bid'ah they have done both. They have done both. Now. Where they change and they alter either the wording itself, they try to change the words themselves, or they'll change the meaning. What taqirun love? An example of them when they try to change the actual wording. Now, just the concept alone lets you understand the sickness of these individuals. They actually try to alter and change the Quran. Now, and that is in Allah Ta'ala statement. وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَىٰ تَكْلِيمًا This is the ayah how it should be recited. That Allah spoke to Musa. Allah spoke to Musa. Ahl al-Bid'ah, they came and they said, No, change the dhamma on lafu jalala from Change it from Allahu to Allah ha. Because if you say Allah ha, وَكَلَّمَ Allah ha, Musa then this means Musa spoke to Allah. So the actual word is changed. In this case, the voweling is changed. So it's changed from Allahu to Allah ha. They changed the dhamma for a fatha. And this changes the meaning. Now, this changes the meaning. That makes sense? Hmm? Right. This is an example of what? Changing the actual wording of the verse. Tahrif. Now, they made tahrif of what? Of the love. Of the actual wording. And that is in changing the dhamma to a fatha. So instead of it reading, what kalim Allahu Musa is. They, they, they recited as وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهَ مُوسَى That Musa spoke to Allah Not that Allah spoke to Musa وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ نعم. And then you have the changing of the meaning They don't change the words But they give a false interpretation to it That changes the meaning An example of that is Allah Ta'ala's statement الرحمن وعلى العرش استوى they say no, istawa means istawla. So they don't change the actual verse, but then they give it a false interpretation that changes the meaning. So instead of it meaning that Allah rose above his throne, 
then they change istiwa, istiwa to istawla, which means that Allah conquered the throne. Right? They say no, istawa means istawla, that Allah conquered the throne. Now, so this is an example of how they change either, yeah, this is an example of how they change the meaning. So a tahrir is to change either the actual wording of the of, of the text or is to change the meaning of the text. Leave the wording intact, but then you change the meaning. In any event, they both make a change. And this is with the meaning of tahrir, a taghir, to change something. That makes sense? Wait. What ta'atil? Ta'atil, lughatan, ma'na at tark. Ta'atil, lughatan, it means to abandon. You leave something off. You 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 abandon it. Ma'am. Istilahan. Inside of the Sharia, it means in kaw ma yajibu lillah min asma'ihi wa sifatihi. It means to negate. That is what is necessitated, yani, be affirmed for Allah from His names and His attributes. It's a negated. Now that negation is of two types. إِمَّا كُلِّيًّا أَوْ جُزْئِيًّا That's that negation. It will either be in totality or it will be partially. Naam. It will either be in totality, كالتعطيل, الجهمية. The Jahmiya, they don't believe in any of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or their ta'atil, we should say, is what is in totality. They negate it all. Or it will be partially, كالتعطيل, الأشاعرة. Like the ta'atil of the Ash'aris. Right? The Ash'aris. Because the Ash'aris, they only affirm seven of Allah's attributes. They only affirm seven of Allah's attributes. Naam. And that has been brought together in the, uh, in the statement, Hayyun animun qadirun wa kalamun lahu wa kalamun lahu Irada wa kathalika as-sam'a wal-basr Al-hay They affirm that Allah is, is alive Anim They affirm that he's all-knowing Qadir He's over all things capable He can do anything Wa kalamu lahu And they affirm that he speaks Irada That he has a will وَكَذَلِكَ أَسَّمْعُ وَالْبَصْرُ And likewise, he hears and he sees. That's it. That's all they affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all they affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the jahmiyyah, they negate all of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, and, and the asha'ira, they affirm only seven of Allah's uh, attributes. Naam. So we have to believe in, in, in the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without taqif. And taqif is to do what? To describe how, right? So is that what to say? Allah rose above his throne like this and like that. No, that's our aqid. We don't ask how, we don't ask why. Naam. Right. So we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't affirm a how. Why? Because Allah has not told us. When it comes to the likes of, yani, when it comes to uh, the likes of these affairs, then they're tawqifiyya. We only know what Allah has informed us. Allah has informed us of the attribute. He's not informed us of the reality of that attribute. So we don't know the reality. We don't know how Allah Ta'ala does this or does that. We don't know. So we affirm what we know. And we stop there. And this is why the Shaykh he mentions that we believe in them and we affirm them as they have come. 
as they have come. Now, this is the aqeed of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. We don't ask how, we don't ask why. Now, likewise, we don't make tamthil. And tamthil is to do what? Tamthil. 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 Huh? It's to, to likening. To say that Allah is like this. Tamthil. Tamthil. That, that. Now, remember the Alif Lam, Ta, Meem, Tha, Ya, Lam. Tamthil. Now, we know we don't say that, we don't describe, or we don't yeah, we make a likening for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, an example of this that a person says Allah's hand is like the human hand. We don't, we don't do this. Right? We don't do this. That makes sense? Fine. Tamthil. So that we don't make a likening for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't make a likening for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does that make sense? Okay. And this is what the ayah negates. Laysa kamithlihi shay. There is nothing that is like him. وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ And he is the all-hearer, the all-seer. Now, there's an important point There's a point that should be mentioned I'm debating myself on whether to mention it. Um, in brief, there's a point that should be mentioned, and that is the you'll find in some books a tashbi. A tashbi. You'll find this terminology in some books that we make no. That there is no similarity. That there is no similarity. Ma'am. And this wording is not correct. This wording is not correct. As Shir Uthaymin, he points out. No, no. That's a likening. See, there's a difference. There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense that <clears throat> Allah ta'ala Let's go back to the ayah. Laysa ka mithlihi shay. There is nothing that is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa sami'u al-basir. And he is the all-hearer, the all-seer. Which means what? Nothing sees like Allah. Nothing hears like Allah. Naam? Nothing sees or hears like Allah. Azza wa jal. That makes sense? However, to say that there is no similarity whatsoever is not correct. Why? Because the human beings have the attributes of hearing and seeing? Yes. So the name is similar. But the reality is not. That makes sense? Like, do animals have the attribute of hearing and seeing? Yes. But the reality is different. The name is the same, but the reality is different. Let's take a low example. If you compare our seeing to the seeing of an eagle, it is different. They see much better than we do. If you compare our hearing to the hearing of a canine, for example, it's different. They hear much better than we do. But if you compare our hearing to the hearing of a mole, for example, then our hearing is better. We hear much better than a mole hears. We see much better than a mole sees. Right? That makes sense? So, to say there is no similarity is actually not correct. Because the name is similar, but the reality is different. So sure, they mean he mentions, he says, so what is correct and what they're getting at and trying to express is that there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah ta'ala negates inside of his of, of his noble book where he says, Laysa can mythli he shame. So he negates that there is a myth. He negates that there is anything that is like him. Nothing hears like he hears. 
Nothing sees like he sees. Nothing knows like he knows. So on and so forth. That makes sense? Hmm? That makes sense that. Wait. <laughs> like shit. Now. <clears throat> the Sheikh Yuzani mentions, he says. فَنَفْعَ لِلَّهِ فَنَنْفِعَ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مَا نَفَاهُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَمَا نَفَاهُ وَمَا نَفَاهُ عَنْهُ رَسُولُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So we negate from Allah that which he has negated from himself and that which the, his messenger صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ has negated for him. Naam. So we negate from Allah that which he has negated for itself and that which the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam has negated for him. وفي هذا يقول إمام مبجل أحمد ابن حنبل رحمه الله تعالى. And for this Imam Ahmed رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned نصف الله بما وصف به نفسه that we Describe Allah with that which He has described Himself with. وَمَا وَصَفَهُ بِهِ رَسُولُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And we describe Him with that which His Messenger صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ has described Him with. وَلَا نَتَجَاوَزُ الْقُرْآنَ وَالْحَدِيثِ And we do not go beyond the Qur'an and the Hadith. We describe Allah with that which comes inside the Qur'an and in the Hadith. We don't go beyond that. We don't go beyond that. Yeah, that makes sense? Like, any, any questions on that? No? Women, okay. this is a very important point. Women la yu'minu bi asma'ihi jalla wa'ala wa sifatih laysa mu'minan billah. This is why this is so important. Because whoever does not believe in his names and his attributes, then he does not believe in Allah. وَكَيْفَ يَكُونَ مُؤْمِنًا بِاللَّهِ مَنْ يَجْهَدُ أَسْمَاءَهُ وَلَوْ وَاحِدًا مِنْهَا The Shaykh, he says, and how could he believe in Allah? The one who arrogantly denies the, his names, even if it's just one of his names. فَإِنَّ جَهَدَ وَاحِدًا مِنْ أَسْمَائِهِ أَوْ صِفَةً واحدة من صفاته كفر به because to negate one name from his names or one attribute from his attributes then this constitutes disbelief in him جل وعلا it's very serious نعم because if Allah Ta'ala has informed you that he has this name who are you to say no he doesn't if Allah Ta'ala has informed you that he has this attribute, who are you to say no he doesn't? Do you think you know better? Naam. And this is why to arrogantly deny any of the names and the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, this is kufr. The Shaykh, he says, وَانْظُرْ شَاهِدْ ذَلِكَ فِي قَوْلِهِ Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala عَنِ الْكُفَّارِ He said, and look at the supporting reference to this. Look at the proof and evidence for this. As it comes in what Allah Ta'ala said about the kuffar. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَهُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ بِالرَّحْمَانِ And they disbelieve in Ar-Rahman. Right? Because the Prophet Sallallahu he had He had it written on the treaty, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَانِ الرَّحِيمِ Right? And the kuffar, they said, they don't, they said, what is, what is Rahman? They said, what is Rahman? We don't know about Rahman. They, so they, they didn't want that. They denied it. They denied that Allah was Ar Rahman. Just one. Just one of Allah's names. They denied it. Naam. So Allah Ta'ala, He revealed this ayah. And they disbelieve in, in Ar Rahman. This could be found in Surah al raid So Allah Azza wa Jal, He refutes them. Uh, and it's verse number 30. Allah Azza wa Jal, He refutes them.
Naam, Surah, surah uh, uh, Ra'ad, in his verse number 30. Allah Ta'ala, he refused them. He says, while they disbelieve in Ar-Rahman, say, he is my Lord, la ilaha illahu. He is my Lord, none has the right to be worshipped in truth except for him. In him I put my trust, and to him I return with repentance. And to him is who I turn to, I return to with repentance. To Allah Azza wa Jal. Naam. So Allah Ta'ala, He called their negating of, of, of His name, Ar-Rahman, Kufran. Allah called it disbelief. Naam. So He utilized His ayah for yani, that, that, that not believing in the names and the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, even if it's just one name and one attribute, then it constitutes disbelief. A person says, well, delete. What, what's your proof of evidence? Right here in this ayah. That Allah Ta'ala, He called their denial of Ar-Rahman, which is just one name, Allah Ta'ala called it disbelief. Allah Ta'ala referred to it as disbelief. Ma'am? But the Shaykh, he asks, he says, فَكَيْفَ يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنًا بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مَنْ, لَمْ مَنْ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِأَسْمَائِهِ So how can he be a believer in Allah, the one who doesn't believe in his names? وَلَا يُؤْمِنُ بِصِفَاتِهِ nor the one who believes in his attributes. Al Walida fi kitabihi wa fi sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one, how can he believe if he disbelieves in Allah's names and in Allah's attributes that have come inside of his book and that have come inside the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How, 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 how can he possibly believe? Ma'am? So to believe correctly in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have to believe correctly in his names. We have to believe correctly in his attributes. Ma'am? And what is the principle as relates to his names and his attributes is, is what? Huh? What's the overall principle as relates to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Laysa? Huh? Laysa kamitli shay. That there is nothing that is like him. There is nothing that is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam? There is nothing that is like Allah azza wa jal. Wa huwa sami'ul basir. And he is the all-hearer, the all-seer. The all-hearer, the all-seer. And Shaykh Saleh Abdul Aziz al Shaykh, he brings us up to show a, a tremendous point. He said, because when it comes to these two particular attributes, of hearing and seeing, he said, you will find most living creatures share one or both of these attributes. Most living creatures have something from hearing and something from seeing. Naam. He says, so this ayah right here shows us that Allah Ta'ala negates that there is nothing that is like him. Nothing hears and sees. However, it does not negate that there could be a similarity in name. So Allah Ta'ala uses these two names and, and, and attributes, right? So as to show us what? So as to show us that it is possible that things share the same name. But the reality is different. And that's why Laysa Kamitli He shape, right? So our hand. We have a hand, right? Five fingers, a palm, lighter on one side than it is on the other side, right? This is called a hand, correct? But does the name being the same mean that the reality is the same? No, it does not. And this is why the people of innovation and of misguidance have went astray. Because they don't understand this simple point. Just because the name is the same, don't mean the reality is the same. You understand? One does not equate to the other. Their premise is wrong. They believe the name and the reality have to match. So if human beings have a hand, Allah can't have a hand. So when Allah says hand, it don't mean hand, it means power. So on and so forth. Right? 
But the reality is, 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 is contrary to that. Allah Ta'ala has a hand because Allah told us He has a hand. What is the reality of Allah Ta'ala's hand? Allahu A'lam. He has not told us the reality of that. But He told us He has a hand. But if we look to the lower example of us, we see this reality every day because we have a hand. What do we call those 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 things on the clock? Hands. Is that hand like this hand? No. Not at all. The raccoon got a hand, right? But the raccoon's hand, is it like the gorilla's hand? No. It's different. Is the raccoon hand like our hand? No, it's different. Right? So we so we see in these little examples that what that the name could be the same, but the reality is different. That makes sense? We have knees. Can do camels have knees? Huh? Camels have knees. We have what we call hands. Camels have hands, right? But does anything on a camel look like anything on us? <laughs> no. No. Right? So the name could be the same, but the reality the, 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 doesn't mean the reality is the same. Does that make sense? So when it comes to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we believe in His names and attributes as they have come. Allah Taala says He has a face. He has a face. The reality of that, Allahu A'lam. Allah has not told us that, right? Allah Taala says He has a hand. He has a hand. What's the reality? Allahu A'lam. Allah has not told us that. So on and so forth. We'll ala dhalik. So the overwhelming principle as it relates to the names and the address of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that what? Laysa ka mithlihi shay. So if you find something and the name is the same, then no, laysa ka mithlihi shay. There is nothing that is like him. So the reality is not the same. That makes sense? Huh? So we believe in the names and the address of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without takyif. And what is takyif? Is what? To describe how. Nor tempted. It was tempted to make a lightning, right? To say that Allah's hand like the hand of the human being. Wa iyadu billah. Wa bila tahrif. What's tahrif? To change or to distort. Now you can do, now you can do that in one of two ways, and that's what one one way is to do what change the actual text, to change the actual wording. And the other way is to do what? Change the meaning. So the wording is the same, but then the meaning is different. And without, what's ta'atui? What's that mean? Without negating it. Without, yeah? And that is in what? That can be done in how many ways? They deny it. Right, deny it, but that, but that, that can be done in how many ways? Two, two ways. Either they deny in what? In totality. Or they deny partially. Now, denial in totality is like the denial of who? The jahmiyyah. Now, and denial in uh, partially is like the denial of who? The shayra. The shayra. Now, that makes sense? That makes sense? Wa bila ta'atib. Now. Nah, bila ta'atib. And Imam Ahmed, he had a tremendous statement as relates to it. And that statement we should have down inside of the, the notes. And that is that what? Nasifu Allaha bima wasafa bihi nafsa. That we describe Allah with that which he described himself with. Aw ma wasafahu bihi rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or by that which his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes him with. Wa la la tajawazu al-Qur'an. Well, hadith, and we do not go beyond the Quran nor the Hadith. We don't go beyond the Quran nor the Hadith. Now, that makes sense. Now, right. So again, the overwhelming principle is what? Laysa kamit lihi shay. No, it's not there. <laughs> 
It's a Surah Shura, verse number 11. Yeah, Surah Shura, verse number 11. Laysa kamithlihi shay, wa huwa sami'ul basir. Now, so that's the ayah, inshallah ta'ala, I want everyone to memorize for homework. Because that's the principle right there. When it comes to any of Allah's names and attributes, Laysa kamithlihi shay. There's nothing that is like him. Nothing that is like him. Right? Nothing that is like him. Make sense? Khair, inshallah. And then the, the Mu'allaf, he goes on to so later on. Well, you know. It's not the same section, huh? Oh, no, no. That's in another section when it comes to that. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Inshallah, we'll come to that when we get to that section. <laughs> Now you have me thinking that there was a, yani a different tabah or something like that. So I'm looking at a different here. <laughs> it's another section. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not that. Uh, not that sleepy, huh? Khair, <laughs> inshallah. But then the muallim, Allah Taala, goes on to the third, the third uh, pillar, as relates to what is needed to properly believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And so far, we have covered two. We cover the, the rububiyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And rububiyya of Allah, what does that mean? The rububiyya? The what? The lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what are some affairs that are linked to, to the lordship? Affairs like what? The Allah ta'ala, he is the creator. Now, what else? He is the arrange of the affairs. And then he, now he is the, he is the provider of provisions, the sustainer. Now, and Allah Ta'ala, he, well, he gives Gives what? Gives Gives life Now, and he is the cause of Death, so on and so forth Now, and these affairs are linked to the affairs of Rububiyya Now, طيب. and then we covered which one? What's the next one we covered? And that's my Now, طيب. so we said it three We mentioned two, so which, what's the third one that's mentioned? That we didn't mention yet, but the third one to be mentioned is what? Al Uluhiyya. Now, what is Uluhiyya? That he alone deserves the right to be worshipped. That he alone deserves the right to be worshipped. Now, in this one, the ulama, they, they, they call it the, the number of expressions yani, to, to articulate the same concept. Uh, sometimes you'll see it and it's called Al Tawheed Al Uluhiyya. Now, other times, uh, Shaykh bin Baz, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he's a often referred to it like this, he will call it a tawheed and ilahiyya. Now, the tawheed of, of, of Allah's divinity. Meaning that all ibadah belong unto him. And in others, and this is more rare, but you find it sometimes, is that they refer to it as a tawheed al ibadah. The tawheed of ibadah. That all of the ibadah, all of the worship, it belongs unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But all of these points are the same concept. Is that what? Is that all of the worship belong to Allah and to Allah alone? Now, this is the one we didn't cover yet. But bin ilahi ta'ala, we will save that one until the next uh, class. Uh, so as to not be too long. And so that... Uh, the portion is appropriate so that the first of the speech is not forgotten uh, and erased by the last of the speech. Ma'am, so that inshallah ta'ala we can we could uh, yani, truly grasp and gain benefit from what was mentioned. 
فنكتفي بهذا القدر والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرًا.